the Heisman Trophy, college football's most prestigious award. I came across a website a while back called HeismanPundit.com, and on this website, they break down what it takes to win the award. They have this list of criteria called the 10 Heismanments. And rule number one, the winner must be a quarterback, a running back, or a multi-threat athlete. And for the most part, this is held true, but it has been tested over time. In 1997, Charles Woodson became the only primarily defensive player to ever win the award. But he did return kicks, and he played quite a bit of receiver that year, so that easily falls into the category of a multi-threat athlete. And so for this video, I've listed guys who don't follow rule number one, and were this close to becoming the most unusual Heisman winner ever. The junior left tackle for Ohio State considered perhaps the best ever at his position. So really quickly, I want to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Look, football season's winding down and it may be hard to get tickets. And SeatGeek is an app that puts tickets from all over the web in one area, which makes buying simple. They rate these deals on a scale of 1 to 100, with the higher the number, the better the deal. For example, if you want to see a guy like Baker Mayfield play, let's just check how much tickets are. Yo, look how cheap these tickets are. Plus, if you use my promo code KTO at checkout, you can get $20 off your first purchase. Come on, you don't want to lose out on cheap tickets. Number 1 In 2009, Nebraska had one of the best defenses in recent memory. In a conference full of some of the best offenses in the nation, they allowed only 10.4 points a game, which was number one in the country, and it all revolved around one man, Indomitian Sue. By some, he was considered the most dominant player in the history of college football. He was so good that Nebraska never had to blitz. In fact, they pretty much exclusively ran the dime package, which is a formation designed to stop the pass. Even though they'd have seven players in coverage, they could run that defense every play because Sue could take on two to three guys every play and still get to the ball. If you put just one guy on him, it was all over. He was receiving so much buzz from coaches that Nebraska played against, he became a nationwide story. And they probably would have been a national title contender if it wasn't for their pretty terrible offense. For example, they had a game against Iowa State where Nebraska had eight turnovers. Iowa State had zero, and Iowa State barely won that game nine to seven. But because their defense was so great, they found their way into the conference title game. And one of the great offensive players of the year, Colt McCoy, leads Texas here tonight. Uh, we've seen Colt McCoy uh, doing it in Austin now for four years. His group of wide receivers and the way they've grown up around Jordan Shipley, that I think it's allowed him to just settle down and go out and just play football. In the final game before the Heisman presentation, Sue made one final statement. Nebraska held Texas in check all game long and were this close to escaping with the upset. Better hurry up. Third down and 13, roll pocket right. Throw it out of bounds and stop the clock. Wait a minute, did the game end? Nebraska thinks it's over. McCoy may have run the clock out. Mack thinks there's a second left. I thought there was a second left. After further review, there's one second left on the game clock. For everything. Sue would walk away with four and a half sacks. That's a clean <laughs> Look at that, huh? It's a clean slate. He could win. But give them all to Every him. one of those. As for the Heisman race, he would end up getting fourth, which shocked many people. Maybe things would have been different if Colt McCoy just threw this ball a little bit higher. Number two. With Sue, you could argue that A, his team wasn't that good, and B, they lost in the most important game of their season. And you could use these to make a case against this Heisman campaign. You couldn't do the same for Steve Entman. 
After being an average team throughout the late 80s, Washington had been revitalized in 1990. After a surprising run to the Rose Bowl in 1990, the next year, they had built a defense that was even better statistically than Nebraska in 2009. They were crushing opponents, and Entman was relentless. And it was enough so to receive Heisman recognition. After going undefeated and a crushing Rose Bowl victory over Michigan, they would split the national title with Miami the greatest matchup that never happened. Edmund would go on to be the number one overall pick, along with taking home some hardware as the nation's best defensive lineman. But why not the Heisman? This was the year that Desmond Howard from Michigan won the award. He did have 23 total touchdowns, which is solid, but as a receiver, he didn't even have a thousand yards receiving. A term tossed around a lot is a player's Heisman moment. And what's the most famous moment of all time? Some speculate that this moment alone was the separation needed for Howard to take home the trophy. Entman, along with Washington, would get their revenge thoroughly in the Rose Bowl. Many analysts say that he was the most dominant player they ever watched. Well, actually, the only player they said that was just as dominant was Indomitian Sue. Number three. Ohio State's Eddie George ran away with the Heisman Trophy in 1995, in what would become one of the greatest seasons in college history. After he graduated in 1996, the Buckeyes had a new Heisman candidate, this time on the offensive line. In what may be the least glamorous position in football, Orlando Pace made it a fan favorite in Columbus. They called him the Pancake Man. Even though it already existed, he popularized the term pancake, which basically means he would flatten the player that he was blocking. He was getting so many that during games, the Jumbotron would list how many pancakes he had. It actually put pressure on me, because now I'm like, man, I only got eight pancakes this game. To promote his Heisman Trophy run, the Ohio State Athletic Department was passing out Orlando Pace pancake magnets. It's funny because a pancake wasn't even an official statistic, yet it was so talked about around the nation in regards to Pace, it's a major reason he was even up for the trophy. Pace would become a finalist, making it a possibility that Ohio State could walk away with back-to-back -back Heisman winners. Even though he got fourth place, what he did with the rest of his career is even greater. He was the number one overall pick in the NFL draft, and he would go on to be a critical part of the greatest show on turf, which is possibly the best NFL offense of all time. And after 13 years of dominating football, he eventually made it into the Hall of Fame. Delivering that perfect pancake block. <laughs> yeah, but let me just say this, there's, there's no other feeling in the world for an offensive lineman to move a man against his will and then to put him on his back, there's no, there's no better feeling than that. 